Tiger, a German heavy tank of World War II, operated from 1942 in Africa and Europe, usually in an independent heavy tank battalion. The Tiger I gave the German army its first armoured fighting vehicle that mounted the 8.8cm or the 36 gun that was derived from the Flak 36. 1,347 Tigers were built between August 1942 and August 1944. After August 1944, production of the Tiger I was phased out in favour of the Tiger II. The internal layout was typical of German tanks. Forward was an open crew compartment with the driver and radio operator seated at the front on either side of the gearbox. Behind them, the turret floor was surrounded by panels forming a continuous level surface. This helped the loader to retrieve the ammunition, which was mostly stored above the tracks. Three men were seated in the turret, the loader to the right of the gun facing to the rear, the gunner to the left of the gun and the commander behind him. There was also a folding seat on the right side for the loader. The turret had a full circular floor and 157 centimeter headroom. Early versions of the Tiger One turret included two pistol ports. However, one of these was replaced with a loader escape hatch and the other deleted from later designs. Post-war testing by the Allies found the tank to be uncomfortable and spartan. This was in contrast to the German crews who found them to be spacious and comfortable. While the Tiger I has been called an outstanding design for its time, it has also been called over-engineered, using expensive materials and labour-intensive production methods. The Tiger was prone to certain types of track failures and breakdowns, and was limited in range by its high fuel consumption. It was expensive to maintain, but generally mechanically reliable. It was difficult to transport and vulnerable to immobilization when mud, ice and snow froze between its overlapping and interleaved patterned road wheels, often jamming them solid. This was a problem on the Eastern Front in the muddy Rapustita season and during periods of extreme cold. The tank was given its nickname Tiger by Ferdinand Porsche, and the Roman numeral was added after the later Tiger II entered into production. The Tiger I had frontal armour of around 4 inches thick, with the front turret armour being around the same and 120mm or just under 5 inches thick gun mantlet. The 56 calibre long 8.8cm 36 main gun was chosen for the Tiger. This was a combination of a flat trajectory from the high muzzle velocity and precision that made it very, very accurate. In British wartime firing trials, five successive hits were scored on a 16 by 18 inch square metal plate target at a range of 1,100 metres, just under 3,500 foot. Compared with the other contemporary German tanks, the 36 had superior penetration. The ammunition for the Tiger had electronically fired primers. Four types of ammunition were available, but not all were fully available. The BZ-GR40 shells that they used quite often during World War II were made from tungsten, and this became in short supply as the war progressed. The rear of the tank held an engine compartment flanked by two separate rear compartments, each containing a fuel tank and radiator. The Germans had not yet developed an adequate diesel engine, so a petrol power plant had to be used instead. The 650 horsepower engine, although a good engine, it was vastly underpowered for the size and weight of the vehicle. 
The engine drove the front sprockets through a drivetrain, connecting to a transmission in the front portion of the lower hull. The front sprockets had to be mounted relatively low as a result. The Krupp-designed 11-ton turret had a hydraulic motor whose pump was powered by mechanical drive from the engine. A full rotation would take around a minute. The main problem with the Tiger was that its production required considerable resources in terms of manpower and materials, which led to it being expensive. The Tiger I cost over twice as much as a Panzer and four times as much as a Stug III assault gun. The tank's weight significantly limited its use of bridges, and for this reason the Tiger was built with watertight hatches and a snorkel device that allowed it to ford water obstacles up to four metres deep. The tank's weight also made driving through buildings risky, as the presence of a cellar could result in a sudden drop. Other limitations was the slow turret speed. The turret could also be traversed manually, but this option was rarely used, except for very small adjustments. Early Tigers had a top speed of around 45 km an hour, or 28 miles an hour, over optimal terrain, and this was not recommended for normal operation and was discouraged in training. An engine governor was subsequently installed, capping the engine to around 2,600 RPM and the Tiger's maximum speed to around 24 miles an hour. Tiger crews report that typical march speed off-road was around 6 miles an hour, however medium tanks of the time such as the Sherman or the T-34 had on average a top speed of around 28 miles an hour, thus despite the Tiger being nearly twice as heavy, its speed was comparatively respectable. With the tank's very wide tracks, a design feature borrowed from the Soviet T-34, the Tiger had a lower ground pressure than many smaller tanks such as the M4 Sherman. Today only seven Tiger I tanks survive in museums and private collections worldwide. As of 2020, Tiger 131, captured during the North Africa campaign, is now at the UK's Tank Museum and is the only example restored to a running working order. I hope you've enjoyed this video here as we take a look at the iconic Tiger tank. I will be looking at other features and vehicles and aircraft associated with IL-2 and World War II and I hope you find it as interesting as I do and as I've said in all my previous videos, a salute and respect goes out to the infantry, the pilots, the tank operators, everybody that was associated with World War II on both sides. Too many people jump immediately and call the Germans Nazis, which is wrong. It just shows that you're uneducated. Many of the German infantry had no idea what was going on back in Germany and Poland in the concentration camps. So the Germans suffered losses, they lost friends, family and they saw horrendous things just as the Allies did. I hope you can understand that. So I salute you all, especially today on Battle of the Britain, which happened 80 years ago today. Thanks for watching, like, share and subscribe and I will be covering more things in the future. Bye bye.